What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to tell you a story about how I learned about the biggest loophole for transitioning service members and how you can take advantage of this loophole as well. So if that's something that interests you, definitely stick around for the rest of this video. What's going on guys and girls? My name is Jason Birds, and this is the military bottom line. On this channel, we talk about how to make the most out of your military contract. We talk about programs, opportunities, benefits, and all kinds of things in order to help you make sure you are prosperous after you decide to get out of the military. So if you are a future service member, current service member, or a veteran, this channel is for you. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any awesome benefits that come out. So before we get into the story, let me start by setting the scene. If you don't know a little bit about my story already, I enlisted in the Marine Corps out of high school and I ended up as an aviation operations specialist. I was an airfield manager out of Camp Pendleton, part of a headquarters squadron where it was about 90% Marines and maybe 10% civilian workforce. After several months on active duty and in the fleet, I began to notice an irregular pattern of four or so Marines that would randomly appear for weeks on end. And just the way they appeared out of nowhere, they would disappear. And I would not be able to find out who they were, what they were doing, and how they were coming at such intermittent times so randomly. They would reappear and disappear throughout the year with no notification that I had, obviously, as a Lance Corporal at the time. I had no idea when these guys were coming and going. However, they would come in, they'd lay in some jokes, maybe help out a little bit, do some random things around the squadron, and then they would disappear again. Me, as a young Lance Corporal PFC at the time, I was not going to question these guys. They were Staff Sergeants, Gunnies, Chief Warrant Officer 5 and 4. And so they knew what was going on, and I'm just a little boot. I was definitely not going to be asking them to explain themselves and how they were so inconsistent in their, in their service. However, over the months and the years of them coming and going, I slowly began to become more bold, comfortable being in the Marine Corps, and eager to learn how they were doing what they were doing. It took a little bit of prying because they weren't easily going to give it up, but I learned that they were reservists. They were part-time Marines, and these weren't normal reservists. These guys came to Camp Pendleton intermittently throughout the year, primarily during the winter months, because they were full-time New York State cops. When they told me this, I just didn't understand. It didn't make any sense. I was there throughout the week, full-time Marine, and they were similarly there for weeks on end, months on end, and then would disappear. There was no seemingly pattern of a one week in a month, two weeks a year type schedule. These guys basically came and went whenever they wanted. And strategically, they did it in the wintertime to avoid the winter months in upstate New York. So I started asking questions. How does this work? And can I take advantage of this too? Of course, they initially played hardball. They would make fun of me, tell me that I was a boot and that I couldn't do anything that they were doing because they were so senior and that because they had been in the Marine Corps for so long. However, after building that relationship and showing them that I'm not a piece of crap, they were more friendly and eager to explain to me how this situation worked and what it was called. They introduced me to the IMA, or the Individual Mobilization Augmentee. The IMA does exist in every branch, and the IMA is there for the purposes of supplementing the active duty forces for whatever branch you are in. The beautiful part about the IMA is that you are rather an individual reservist instead of part of a reservist unit. So because of the individual nature of the IMA, they were able to attach themselves to our active duty unit, which drills all year round. 365, they're always there. So instead of having to attach themselves to a reserve unit where they do the standard one week in a month, two weeks a year, they were able to come and go as they pleased as long as they found a mutually beneficial schedule with the unit and with themselves where both sides needed and could benefit from their presence there. So when I learned about the existence of this program and of this type of reserve activity, I obviously asked questions. As I was preparing to transition out, I started to begin wondering how I could take advantage of this. They directed me to go talk to a prior service recruiter. 
At the time, they were in Miramar, and they gave me a specific person to talk to who was going to help me out. So I talked to them. I also talked to their civilian supervisor who was in an office upstairs for myself. I asked him if a billet existed for somebody in my MOS and of my rank in our unit. Lo and behold, there was a billet for my rank and my job, my MOS, in the office that had that I had been working in for years. It had never been filled because one, we didn't really need the people. Two, nobody actually knew about it. So they're not going to go seek out those positions and those people necessarily to fill those positions if they're not needed. So when I asked this civilian supervisor, he let me know that it did in fact exist and that he would be more than willing to fill that role with my name. So what did my I'm a role look like? Essentially, I left active duty on terminal leave in November. I went on terminal leave for two months, traveled the world, came back to Southern California to go enroll in college full-time right there in Oceanside, lived in an apartment, lived with some friends, and I spent two months of terminal plus four months of my first semester of college without any Marine Corps obligations. I grew out some facial hair. I grew out my hair. I surfed, I went to school, and for as far as I could tell, I was a free man and could do whatever I want within reason. But the difference was at the end of that first semester, I went online to my portal, reached out to my supervisor, and asked if I could schedule six to seven weeks of drill and AT time. Without hesitation, he accepted, and there I was. I had work for the entire summer. I had the ability to come and go as I pleased, do two drills a day, two four-hour periods, full-time, take the weekends off, enjoy summertime, make some money, and then just go back to school for the next semester. I did this for a number of years while I was in school in California. I was blown away by the flexibility that the IMA provided. I would go to drill through the summertime full-time, and then every once in a while, I would maybe do a weekend during the school year where I heard I could jump on a range to do rifle and pistol qual in two days instead of two weeks, I would get that done. Or if I knew that I just needed to get my CFT done real quick, I'd skip class to schedule a four-hour drill. I'd go in, run the CFT, and then I'd be done. And I would maintain and continue to ensure that all my training and all my requirements were fulfilled in order to get that satisfactory year. I even remember one summer I had scheduled drills for about a full month and midway through that drill schedule, I found out that my buddy was going out to Hawaii. I then had the freedom and flexibility to cancel those drills, fly out to Hawaii for a week and enjoy time there and then come back and continue those drills. And what the craziest part about not only the IMA, but doing it at the time in which I was doing it is that there was no obligation for that service. Because I signed an eight-year contract, four years of active duty, four years in the IRR, I was able to basically try out the IMA. I was able to try out the reserves. And at any point in time, if I wanted to drop back to the IRR, I could just stop drilling. I could basically just not schedule myself for drills. I could fall behind on my training and my annual requirements. And there would be really no ramifications. It would just drop me back to the IRR. I would not get a satisfactory year towards retirement. And that was that. So as far as transitioning service members go, if you are thinking that you want to maybe stay in the military, but you don't want to do active duty anymore, you don't want to do guard anymore, you don't want that one week in a month, two weeks a year schedule, then the IMA is an incredible opportunity for you to look for, to talk to your supervisors about, and see if that opportunity exists for your rank and for your job. Personally, I am so grateful I had that opportunity. It enabled me to not get some crappy summertime job. I went back to the military, made some decent money while I was on break during the summertime, and then went back to school. The amount of flexibility it offered me was just tremendous. I mean, tremendous. And so it's something that I really recommend, especially if you're going to be in an area where you can easily commute to base and you know the difference between your other job or school and going to base to drill and do your, your reserve time. If that's not too much of a hindrance, then I would highly recommend it because not all branches are going to be willing to fly you back and forth, uh, especially the Marine Corps. They were super cheap 
But if you guys are interested in looking into the IMA and maybe taking advantage of that non-obligatory reserve time after your first contract, definitely talk to a prior service recruiter. Tell them specifically you are interested in the IMA. And honestly, I would not be surprised if many of them don't know about it. So make sure you do your homework. It does exist. It exists in the Army. It exists in the Air Force. It exists in the Marine Corps. It exists. It exists. So uh, if the recruiter is not familiar with it, make sure that you do the homework. You show them that it exists. And if they still don't believe you, find a different recruiter because it is real. It is worthwhile. And I definitely, definitely recommend it. So if you guys are transitioning out and you are considering staying in the military in some capacity, maybe you're thinking about the National Guard, maybe you're thinking about the reserves. I think you're going to enjoy this video I made just last week uh, comparing those two options and my suggestion for that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this story. I really hope this kind of opened up some ideas for you. And I really hope you guys subscribe to the channel. So I'll see you guys next week. Peace.